this lecture is also focused upon psycholinguistics. Um, there are two theories uh, about uh, language acquisition because when we uh, think about psycholinguistics, uh, the most important thing is that it talks about how children, newborn babies, how they acquire, how they learn their first language. That's part of psycholinguistics. So whereas this language acquisition is concerned, especially native language acquisition, so there are two types of theories which are very much important. And they are called language acquisition theories. So the very first one is that is called uh, behaviorist theory. And the behaviorist theory means that uh, it is related with behavior, it is related with society, mean that a child learns language from the society. Whenever a child is born, language is already existing before him or her. And when he grows up in the form of having uh, cooing and babbling and all type of things, then he starts learning, starts imitating, he listens words uh, which are spoken around him, he listens phrases which are spoken around, around him or her, he listens or she listens different type of sentences which are uh, used around him or her, then he or she starts learning that language. So uh, according to behaviorist, language learning is a process that is a process of experience. It means that with the passage of time, they uh, experience, they listen from outside and then they learn. And this is also a part, it is not a part of perhaps of nature, but it is related with the thing that is called nurturing. Nurturing means that when a baby is born, he or she is surrounded by language, there is language, there are people around him or her and they are using language. So in uh, when he is nurtured, language is going to be learned by uh, that person or that uh, baby. Then there is operant conditioning or conditioned behavior. Operant condition means that if suppose there is a place where there is no use of language, there a baby is not in the position to use any language because he or she hasn't listened any language. He she or she hasn't listened even a single word of any language. So how we can expect from a baby that uh, he or she is in the position to utter any word? It means that it is something operant conditioning or it is conditioned behavior. It is repeated training. Means when uh, small babies are at house and they are going to be uh, trained by using different words. Their parents, uh, our elders, they utter different words and they want him or her to repeat those words. And when there is repetition, the result is that the baby starts learning that language and it is also called repeated training. And conditioned behavior means that there are people outside, their behavior, their way of talking, the baby learns from that. So it is conditioned behavior. Mean conditioned behavior means that there must be language speakers outside that baby there must be speakers when they are outside it means that a baby can adopt their uh, use of different words in order to it means that according to this theory bf skinner and other uh, upon, uh, other people who are adhere to this theory they say that language acquisition is not a thing that is something inborn or innate and not a baby is not born with thing that he can uh, understand language by uh, without any outside source behavior is said that behavior is responsible society is responsible outside conditions are responsible, people responsible, means the language must be outside. So when this, in order to prove this, they also did an experiment. And what was that experiment? They put a rat in a box containing a bar. So for the first time it so happened that by chance that uh, rat uh, touched that bar. And when that uh, touched that bar, that rat was provided food or whatever that was to eat and when perhaps it was uh, happened uh, by chance but th then that uh, rat came to know or uh, that whenever that rat is feeling hungry he used to touch that bar and there used to come food for that Rat. Then the task was made more difficult. How that now this at this time at second stage rat was provided food when he touched that bar and at same time he also a light was flashed in that there in that box. So it was difficult initially. It was very difficult for uh, that rat to. Uh, 
understand that but with the passage of time he was conditioned to that situation now whenever he was hungry he used to the, the this it means that uh, with the passage of time they also made these uh, task difficult and then he was puzzled and at third stage they made it more difficult because at this stage now food is pro was provided when bar is pressed again and again it means that rat pressed it one time and there was no food then he pressed it again then there was no food then again he pressed it then there was no food then he pressed it again and again there was food was provided now rat started uh, started thinking that or started learning this thing that this all is operate conditioning now rat was aware of this fact that when he will uh, touch this bar again and again he will provide so this it mean that there was behavior outside that there were conditions outside that and uh, he was start learning for example just touching the bar this was the first condition then uh, uh, touching the bar and there is a flashing of light this was the second stage then touching the bar again and again so that 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 animal that that started learning this process and then what is that process that process is called operant conditions because rat learns all this operant conditions and where this operant condition is concerned it is uh, described uh, through this diagram there is stimulus then there is a response then there is reinforcement and then there repetition it tells us that how do children learn language stimulus stimulus means outside thing there must be for example if you want a baby to learn any word any language any sentence or any phrase there must be stimulus mean that a man must speak use that word this is called stimulus then there is response response comes from that baby and then there is reinforcement and then repetition what is reinforcement reinforcement mean that there are two types of reinforcements one is positive reinforcement other is negative reinforcement when a baby is uttering a word and parents are going to praise that baby parents are going to appreciate that baby and they are going to reward that baby it mean that that is called positive reinforcement and positive reinforcement helps the baby to learn language easily and whereas uh, this uh, negative uh, is concerned this is negative reinforcement it means that there is going to the a child is going to be rebuked a child is going to be punished and this is called negative reinforcement and this is the thing which becomes a hindrance in learning first language and whereas these two things are concerned positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement these are very much important not only in language learning but also for the whole life of each and every person whenever any person is doing something good there must be positive reinforcement when a person is uh, uh, rewarded when a person is praised when a person is going to be encouraged it means that there is going to be positive reinforcement and the result will be more and more uh, good and uh, uh, good and useful for the person and if there is negative it means that we are all the time criticizing other we are all the time rebuking other we are all the time uh, talking about other we are trying to punish uh, punishing others it means that there is negative reinforcement result will be zero nothing will come out of it yeah, so according to this theory a child learns from behavior but positive reinforcement is very much important and then uh, because they say that positive reinforcement helps in good learning and learn language by imitation babies learn first language through imitation because they are in a society their parents their uh, mother father uncles brothers sisters and grandparents they are using language they are uttering different words when a child learns that words when the child listen those words he tries to repeat them when he repeats them it means that this is called imitation so he learns through imitation he learns through nurturing then uh, suppose in, in any family when a child learns any word his parents encourage him for suppose a word uh, there is a child who is going to uh, learn any word uh, that is called biscuit is a word when he is learning that word it mean that again and again there is the repetition whenever that thing biscuit comes before that baby he think that this is a thing which is called 
the word we use for this is biscuit so this is the repetition and parents will feel happy and parents will try to encourage him a parents will try to reward him parents will try to praise him and then he will start learning this thing so where are this psycholinguistics and language learning theories are concerned language acquisition theories so the very first thing is that that is theories we have talked about this is that is behaviorist behaviorist theory means that children learn language through behavior to operant conditioning through from uh, outside through uh, stimulus response reinforcement repetition they repeat different words they imitate different words and the result is that this is uh, uh, that they have been in the position to learn that language and this is the behaviorist and the second theory that is important that is called mentalist theory and in the next lecture and uh, third part of psycholinguistics we are going to uh, discuss uh, that mentalism or mentalist theory of language learning acquisition.